just all right well everyone welcome tonight elizabeth and i are so glad that you are here this is the most spontaneous virtual mom's night ever we came up with this idea uh, I don't know, a little bit before lunchtime yesterday. So the yeah. fact that so many of you <laughs> are here. here. Yes, it was truly like the most last minute thing. We're like, we'd love to have like a discussion with other moms. How can we do that? What could that look like? So thank you all so much uh, for coming. We're just really, really grateful that you're here. And uh, we hope that this, this time together encourages your heart and also uh, is helpful to you and gives you some good ideas uh, for your home and your family during this crazy, crazy time. Before we get started, I'm going to open with just a little prayer. And I picked a prayer from this prayer book called Mother Love. I love this. It's called A Manual for Christian Mothers. And it has prayers for mothers for like pretty much everything that we go through from labor, delivery, <laughs> breastfeeding, like everything. But the one I picked for tonight is called A Prayer for, of, of Mothers for Their Children. So let's start with this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, good God, we thank thee that you have given us children, made them heirs of heaven by holy baptism, and entrusted to us their training. Penetrate us with a sense of our responsibility, assist us in the care of their health, but especially in the preservation of their innocence and purity of heart. Grant that we may teach them early to know, love, and serve you, and with all, with all their heart. Grant that we ourselves may carefully avoid all that we must forbid them and may assiduously practice all that we should inculcate to them. We commend you, them, O God, to thy paternal care and to the guardianship of thy holy angels. Bless, O Heavenly Father, our little efforts. May our children's advancement in years be to thy honor and may they persevere to the end. Amen. In the name of the Amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Stephanie Weinert. I'm a mama from Charlotte, North Carolina. I live here with my husband, Peter, and our five children, ages nine, eight, six, four, and four months. And we have one big dog. And this is my fifth year of formally homeschooling my children. I very much feel like I am still a newbie to being a homeschool mom, but I was homeschooled as a child. So I was homeschooled from kindergarten through 12th grade. So I feel like I have more experience as a homeschooled student than I do as a teacher. Um, and it does not translate that if you're a homeschooled student, you become a great homeschool teacher. It's, it's <laughs> starting from ground zero, no matter what. Um, but you do have a perspective, you know? I, I do, <laughs> but it's like, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is a lot harder from this case than it, it was the other case. <laughs> Um, so yes, we love homeschooling. It's definitely a, a challenge. Um, it's a challenge for me all over again this year, having my fifth baby. Um, I also work part-time from home. So life is very crazy, but it does work when we have the right mindset, our hearts in the right place, and, um, we put in the effort. So, uh, anyway, so that's a little bit of my story. Elizabeth, can you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about your homeschool journey and your family? Yeah. So, um, I am Elizabeth Foss. I have nine children, um, many of whom are not children anymore. <laughs> um, my oldest is 31, and um, my youngest is 11. Um, and they're pretty evenly spaced in there, um, with a pretty big gap between the first and the second, and a gap between the seventh and the eighth. Those, those are like four-year gaps. The rest of them are two years apart. Um, so I've been homeschooling since my oldest was the biggest, uh, was since my oldest was the biggest, no, I, <laughs> since my oldest began school. Um, before that I taught, I was a public school teacher. I taught in the public schools for a couple of years before Michael was born. Um, I taught kindergarten and first grade, um, and then made this decision, you know, basically when it was a baby and I, I we came at it from a very, very much from the educational perspective. There's just so much I wanted to do with him that I, I kind of fell in it, into it from a really secular perspective. And then, you know, it became more Catholic homeschooling as I began to put it into action. So um, we homeschool all the way through. Um, it's just always worked that way. Um, and in high school, we transition them right around their junior year so that they're doing dual enrollment classes 
Um, and um, that has worked really well for, for us. Most of our kids go to college with 40 or more college credits. So it, it's, it does a lot of things. Um, it gives me a chance to get them going and, and give them a, a firm footing before they go. It also um, alleviates some of the, my kids have tended to be college athletes and, and this means that they don't have to take five hours, uh, five classes, um, you know, that 15 hour, especially that first and second semester, they can cut it back a little bit because they have plenty of buffer in there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm learning that they're very well equipped and kind of adapted to a college kind of schedule. Um, so that's worked really well for us. And it's been how we've been able to homeschool high school all the way through and still really validate what we're doing. Yeah. Because they have an actual college transcript going in. Oh, that's awesome. So that's the deal. So we have um, five that have gone, five that have gone to college, four have graduated, um, one has a graduate degree, one almost has a graduate degree, if we could just get the schools to open up again, um, and then one who was recently accepted, so he'll go next year, that's our sixth child, so okay. that's where we are. Okay, that's awesome. So tonight, a couple of the things that uh, we hope for this evening, and we'll see, we might continue this into further discussion since we're all going to be home and, and need to fill our, our nights doing something, right? So we hope to do more discussions like this. But one thing for those of you whose children are coming home and you're uh, trying to navigate what that's going to look like in the next coming weeks, and you are perhaps unexpectedly homeschooling here for a short period of time, one of the things that was really on my heart yesterday when I was texting Elizabeth my rant slash TED talk about what I was seeing from uh, homeschool moms sharing on Instagram and social media about, let me tell you about my homeschool philosophy or let me tell you about my homeschool method or let me tell you about my homeschool curriculum. Right. And I was like ready to yank my hair out. <laughs> you don't need a curriculum right now, mamas. You don't need a homeschool philosophy. You don't need to read a stack of books that's gonna give you a, a vision for homeschooling. What you need are a few practical tips and tools and resources to navigate the next couple weeks. And most of all, you need to be encouraged that you're not alone, that pretty much every single mama out there who has kids coming home and you're gonna be all stuck together pretty closely for the next several weeks, we are all experiencing those, experiencing those same stresses and questions and trying to figure out what this is gonna look like. So one of the big things, Elizabeth, that uh, you shared with me yesterday is um, more than curriculum or, or you know, what books to buy off Amazon for the next couple weeks or how this is gonna work is, is kind of a, a new routine or a new rhythm at home. So can you speak to us right. a little bit about that and why that should kind of be a, a starting point or a foundation for all of us mothers? Yeah, I mean, I think that, and, and I, I did this last week too, because this is, this is going to be a new routine for us, even though we've been homeschooling, you know, suddenly the routine doesn't include leaving in the afternoons for extracurricular activities. A couple of my kids aren't going to be working or they were working part time. Um, and, um, and my college student who was home for spring break is suddenly home. <laughs> but actually has school to do. Like they're gonna eventually, he's gonna have some sort of online something to finish things out. So, so I had to think about it too, but Stephanie, you and I were talking and we all have routines. I mean, if your kids are in school, you have your, your lunchbox routine and you have your carpool line routine and you, know, you, have, you have routines that belong to last week before Wednesday. And just to be encouraged, you mamas with kids in traditional school probably have better routines than we do as homeschoolers. Because you have because to. You have to, yeah. So right. you're, you you're the experts at routines. Right. You know, we, our, our routines a lot of times include pajamas for <laughs> way later than most people wear their pajamas in the day. And, and you know, it's a lot, it, we have a lot of leeway. Um, and, and so I guess what I did last week was start thinking about the routines that we had and how they were going to be different. And then knowing what I know about how we function best when we're all under roof, mm -hmm. you know, what do we need? And I think the first thing you need to do is not call it a routine okay. because I think a routine is a master and you begin to feel if you're sitting there and you're going, okay, well from nine to nine 30, we're going to do this. And from nine 30 to 10, we're going to do this. And then we're all going to go outside and run around and we're going to come back in and at 11 o'clock we're going to have or whatever. 
you're going to be frustrated by noon the first day because it's really hard. This don't try to do school at home, you know, where you're changing classes or whatever. It's almost impossible to stick to that time routine schedule thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's easier if we think about it in terms of rhythms. Okay. You know, we're going to get up in the morning and we're going to do this first and then this and then this and it'll roll and we can adapt. You don't want to have nothing planned because you will have chaos, but you don't want to have the plan be the master. You want the plan to be the tool. So the routine is, is a, a flowing rhythm that is more your tool. So, you know, Stephanie, I, you and I talked a little bit about, about what that is and how, um, I think the first thing we need to think about is that your kids are your kids for a reason, you know, like you are the best person for these kids and your home is your home and you are, you are the feminine genius in that home. And you need to have the confidence that you are uniquely equipped for this time yes. to do this thing with these kids and you can do that. And we can all share ideas and some of your ideas are gonna be great for my kids. And some of my ideas are gonna be not work at all because mm -hmm. we have different households. You know, my husband is home and yours might not. Um, you know, uh, somebody who has six boys at home all day is gonna look a lot different than three little girls. And I don't yes. mean that at all sexist. I just mean, I've done both. And they live differently in a house. So I think we can share ideas. Like, I think you've got, like, our morning routine in terms of my kids, a morning routine is not, it would not look to anybody else like it's a routine at all. Because it depends on who worked late, who had late dance, who has to be up early. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a kid who gets in from work at 10 o'clock a lot of nights. But I have another kid who is out the door at 4.30 in the morning because he works the early shift mm -hmm. at the gym. Wow. So that routine looks really different. And I know that there's a rhythm under it, but it's not going to look like that for you. When the next, right. You may not make brownies. <laughs> no. no, it is Sunday, isn't it? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so here's the deal. I'm going to explain that. <laughs> Usually, you may not make noise though. Usually on Sundays, we have Sundays, we have ice cream Sundays, and she just pointed out that that didn't happen today, and so whatever. Okay. It's part of the rhythm, Mom. <laughs> I stick to the rhythm. So, <laughs> I love it. So in a minute, you're going to wish you could smell my house. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I already do. Anyway, you know, you've got a great morning routine. Like yours actually looks like somebody could come into your house and they could see, uh, <laughs> see the routine. Some days, some days, you know, when you have a new baby, nothing looks, everything is different every single right. day. And that's really the key is the mindset of knowing every morning is going to be different because the baby might sleep in a little bit. The baby might wake up cranky, you know, like everything, yeah. the four-year-old might wake up cranky and that's even worse than the baby waking up cranky. You know, it's just, it's different every day. One thing before we go um, into any more detail on rhythm, Elizabeth, is I'm watching the comments a little bit and I received a bunch of questions via email before we went live tonight. And something that's coming up constantly is I don't feel equipped. And I just want to speak, and I hope that you will um, speak as well, Elizabeth, about mindset a little bit because our mindset going into what's going to start for our new normal tomorrow and and the internal dialogue we have with ourselves oh my does goodness. matter it and does. more sure. than any member of the family the mindset of the mother and the internal dialogue of the mother being the heart of the home matters and so if we wake up tomorrow with the mindset that i am not equipped with for this this is going to be terrible we're all going to kill each other. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be ready to file for divorce by the end of the week. Like all of those things, if that's 100%. our mindset going into it, we, it's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Instead, I totally agree. I yes, can't, if I we can't wake up, more. yes, to wake up with the mindset that this is totally different, totally unexpected, but God has a plan for this, for my family right now. 
what if this is the biggest blessing we've ever had? We're all going to get to know each other better. We're going to grow in virtue together. We're going to have, you know, extra time together that we would never have had if this hadn't happened. And hundred um, percent. yes, it, even just the blessing of having, getting to experience homeschooling for a couple of weeks, you'll find out if this is for you long-term or not real quick, you know? So there's so many blessings here. But the mindset that we have as women and as mothers is going to set the tone for everything that happens in here. And I totally agree. It's really a choice too. This is a this is a an act of the will, not so much the heart. Like your heart can be stressed, your heart can be burdened, you can have all these worries. But what you're you know the act of the will, what you're telling yourself, uh, that dialogue with yourself, it really does matter. And I, and I do, I, I, again and again, you are enough for this. Whatever enough looks like in your house, you are enough. You know, we, we get up in the morning and the first, the first thing we do is ask for the strength and grace for the day. I mean, and we'll get it. You know, it, it's there and we're going to mess up. We're going to apologize. You know, we're all going to work together. And I definitely had a day last week where I, the way my week worked last week, Mike has been working from a distance. He's been out West pretty much most of this year. And, um, and by Thursday night, I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> Is he even going to get home? Like what everything just, and I just was really missing that anchor that he's not here kind of thing and got to that end of my rope. I can't do this kind of thing and, and lost it with pretty much everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and then thought, well, here's where we, you know, yep. Yep. they were sorry. <laughs> um, yep. But I do think that, that we learn and we keep learning and we keep changing. And the other thing I would caution you about going into tomorrow and Tuesday and those first few days of new normal is I don't know any homeschoolers. I don't think I ever remember a homeschooler who finishes their first day and goes, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> it went off exactly the way I thought it was going to go. Right. I love this. Usually it's like, oh my God, I've got to do everything all over. I don't know how to do this. How did you put me here? Like just the first day never goes the way you plan it to go. And, um, and the first week is all about tweaking and figuring out a rhythm and, and what are we going to do and how are we going to do it? So don't get discouraged tomorrow or Tuesday because as things fail, you're actually testing the program and that's all part of the process and give yourselves lots and lots of grace and know that it's going to, it's going to evolve. It's going to change. And, and then the other thing is, you know, tomorrow you get up and your baby's four weeks old and eight weeks from now, your baby's a lot older. And especially right. if you have little kids, nothing stays the same. Right. It changes constantly. You're constantly revamping it. So mm -hmm. give yourself all the patience in the world. And that internal dialogue, talk to yourself like you're talking to your best friend. Really, truly, you know, just be gentle with yourself internally because you need to be your biggest cheerleader. Right. And often the, the thing that I've learned is we don't even realize the negative internal dialogue. Sometimes oh. it's so subtle that mm -hmm. we don't even realize <laughs> that we're doing it. So yeah. this might be a good week if, if you're a woman who likes to journal or even if you've got post notes in your kitchen, if you have some thoughts like write them down so that you can see on paper what you're telling yourself and what you're thinking, because 100%. some of us, we are going to have to be actively consciously rejecting certain thoughts and choosing to change that conversation with ourselves in order to have a happy home here and have a happy heart too, because it really, it affects us on every level, what we tell ourselves physically, emotionally, mentally, and it's going to get just a little harder in all of those areas for us women. So we just really need to be careful and, and conscious about that. I think. I think so, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about rhythm. What, uh, can you give us a little bit of an, of a sample day of what a rhythm could look like, like, or just some ideas for, for formulating our own rhythms? Yeah. So I think, um, I think it's important for me, my day has to start before they get up. Um, and I, and I think that might be different for different people because I think if you are a naturally a night owl, 
-hmm. You need that time at the end of the day to really regroup and kind of get yourself centered and, and back together. Mm -hmm. I have to have it in the morning. So okay. um, I get up before they do. And as my kids have gotten older, that's not hard. When my kids were little, like to get up with a baby and be sitting there nursing a baby in a quiet house, that still felt like alone time to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I still would count that as that. Um, I think it's really important that that time is prayer time. You know, I, when I get up in the morning, I pray a rosary and then um, I listen to um, scripture read aloud. Um, mm -hmm. I, I use the dwell app okay. and, um, and I get laundry going. You know, so I fold clothes and listen to scripture and um, empty the dishwasher, start with the kitchen clean and ready to roll. For me, that just means, you know, I've done something to kind of set the stage. Yes. Um, and then, you know, kids come down and they eat. And um, those first few hours of the day, usually, especially before people were coming and going with, um, with work and everything, you know, those were kind of concentrated school times. And mm -hmm. I try to vary something that's that needs me and then somebody else has something that doesn't need me and we probably don't have time to get into exactly how that works but you know if you don't have your baby in your arms and in a front pack if you can't you know if they're a little big for that then you, it helps to trade off with other kids and, and just do the best you can um every day needs outside time and i think under these circumstances we're gonna need more Mm -hmm. I think we're going to need like a lot because yeah. um, as we take that whole idea of social distancing seriously by day three or four, you know, these walls are going to close in. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important and really healthy for us to get outside. And even if it's, you know, run around our yard and, right. and just, you know, we'll race you or, or whatever. Right. Um, I, I think, the outside time and and I think that it it's like a triplicate you know it's fresh air it's nature and it's exercise all of them together or one at a time and get out three different times or whatever but the get outside um our meals in our house have evolved to like community event sorts of things you know my kids all really like to cook almost all of them really like to cook so a lot of what we do together in terms of talking with each other but also what they learn um i have children who are intensely interested in person and things like that and that's always been kind of a natural evolution um okay so somebody's saying what do you do in nasty yeah. weather so you pray it doesn't stay nasty forever um but if you're able to you know this is where the good rain boots and and raincoats get, get lots of play and it's okay to get out and get wet and slosh around and come back and mm -hmm. um, mud and dirt are are an okay thing yeah. this time of year we really love to go down to our favorite creek and the bluebells are in bloom and it's always a muddy mess and that's just mm -hmm. i accept that that it's just a mess yep um but but i do think somebody's suggesting the book there's no such thing as bad weather i think that's a great book <laughs> <laughs> um but so outside and then nasty weather, if, if it's really nasty and you can't get out, then, um, then you've got to do something inside. Um, you know, you and, and whether that's everybody running up and down stairs or um, I remember when we bought this house, I had a bunch of little boys at that point and I wanted, um, I wanted a house that had like where you can run a circuit around and like so you can go from my kitchen into my dining room into my around and, and they could do it and they did yep. it all the time. Yep. Um, so I think you just do the best you can. And somebody said negative 30, 35 degrees Celsius is bad weather. I would I would agree. That's that's bad. That's hard. Um, so I, I can't answer all the, the the what if questions, but I definitely think that that part of the day has to be getting outside. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other, you know, the schools are gonna give you curriculum. They're going to have things that, that the, the kids need to do. I would warn you, you know, I checked in with my grandchildren today and um, we've got a kindergartner who has basically finished all the math that was sent home already. You know, she just, this is so fun to do school at home. And, you know, I was done. And, um, and, if that's the case, and I think that's gonna be the case a lot, 
it, because these teachers didn't have any time to get this together and they did the best they could, but you can only send home so much too. Mm -hmm. I would caution you that, that these kids need to be doing academic things every day, like math and reading, just keep them, or they're going to lose it. And then they're, then you're going to have to bring it all back. So, you know, maybe later we can talk about some resources for supplementing that that stuff but you know probably you can get most of the academic but the the real table time kind of academics done in the morning a break for outside lunch is a communal event where you're all helping to make lunch together and you're all cleaning up after lunch together and then everybody gets chores and i'm a giant believer in chores and it, this is where it's hard because you want them, you, I think you want so much for them to want to be home and to see the gift in being home and you don't want to be the heavy, um, mm -hmm. but chores are a necessity. You know, if we're all going to be in this house together all the time, we need to collectively be invested in keeping it tidy mm -hmm. and keeping it clean. But they're also a necessity in, in children truly being a part of the community of home and truly being a part, you can't read these questions, totally. That's um, okay, that's okay. I'm sort of writing them down, I'm mentally watching Okay, them. okay, so I, I just, you know, I think it's hard and, and I'll tell you, sometimes it's harder to tell the bigger kids that they have to do jobs, mm -hmm. than it is the you know, little kids tend to be much more willing. Um, but I think you can find something for everybody to do. Um, a four-year-old with a spray bat bottle and a rag can whip around those baseboards and they can see how they get better. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's been productive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, vacuum cleaners, things that they love. Anyway, mm -hmm. little ones, it's easy. Bigger ones, when you're asking them to truly, I think, truly um, contribute to the well being of the household, mm -hmm. I find myself explaining that over and over again. Um, you guys, we have to do this, and I can't do this by myself, and I actually need you to do that yeah. and then when it gets done making sure that we treat them the way we treat any older you know person adult and saying god i couldn't have done that without you how i thank you for your help you know i'm really grateful for you too but chores are a thing and and grown-ups do chores like it's not an mm -hmm. option for us so kids right. need to learn that early right. that this is part so maybe give some time to thinking about who does, and I don't do big tour charts, I don't do stickers, I've never done stickers, um, partly because I feel like we're all in this together and you know, it's what you do. And partly because, you know, navigating a chore chart with seven kids and remembering to check it off and everything else has just never worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did, for a lot of years, have designated chores. And you know, and even today we had to do a pretty big but clean up today um, in advance of unexpectedly showing our house, which that's another story, but um, try to sell a house during a pandemic. But <laughs> I, you know, I ended up like just making a list of everything that had to be done and saying, mm -hmm. okay, you finish something, go check the list and find the next thing kind of right. thing. But I think chores are critical in the rhythm of the day. And I think this is also an area where if you are married, bring your spouse into this because you're probably all going to be home a lot more together, not just you and the kids, sure. but your spouse is probably going to be a home a lot more too. And verbalizing your needs to him and, you know, just being very honest. And that's something that's been hard for me. It's been a hard lesson for me to learn in marriage because I'm, I'm introverted. I, I, tend to keep it all in and I think expect everyone to know what I'm thinking without me having to verbalize everything but really to tell your needs and to speak it honestly is a good thing and your spouse will probably be so grateful for some direction and knowing what you need. Um, I, so you know, I agree with that and I especially think that um, he's the biggest kid of all. Well, we may be able to talk about that. But, but one thing, the difference today, because Mike was home today for the first time, you know, as I'm trying to do this with our kids, um, after, like, at, at or around 11 with a boy, mm -hmm. that, that dynamic becomes really hard with mom mm -hmm. um, asking them what, to, you know, to do something or, and it's not that my boys are disrespectful. It's just 
I can't even quite articulate it. It just doesn't pull the same punch. And then when they're, you know, I, my youngest son is 14 inches taller than I am, you know, it's just this weird kind of, and um, the one thing I said to Mike today, this morning was, yeah, I just need you to help these boys understand that this needs to happen. And, and then to be able to let him do that in whatever manner he chooses, mm -hmm. because he does know better how to, that dynamic works better with them. And um, oh boy, this was like a totally different situation today. Um, you know, his presence made a big difference. So even though I think it's, it's for some of us who are used to having our house to ourselves during the day and we have our husbands working at home, there'll be this really weird dynamic of, wait, you're in my space. Even though, you know, he comes home at the end of the day, but, but there is that strange, you know, why are you here kind of mm -hmm. dynamic. And Mike works from home a lot. And um, I think the, the more I... The more I live it, the more I encourage you to see him as as a plus, you know, as as this is this is a good thing to have him here and, and to help with this and to articulate to him where it, it's hard and, and what you need help with and um and and to see that he brings different strengths. And I think sometimes we look at that as it's kind right. of frictional. Mm -hmm. But um, but if we can step outside of it and try not to be defensive, he does bring different strengths. There are, you know, it, it does, it will complement each other. But that that's a dance. It takes a while to learn. Right. So. All right. So I want to uh, just address something that's coming in a lot in the comments. I think that there's a lot of fear um, with the children all coming home and this idea of unexpectedly homeschooling that everyone learn, needs to learn how to become teachers in like the next 48 hours so that you have to learn how to teach math and teach phonics and do you have to teach your kid to read in the next six weeks or any of those things. And I think what Elizabeth and I really want to communicate to everyone is no one is expecting that from you and you don't need to expect that from yourself either. You're, the teachers who are studying home, the math homework are not expecting you to teach geometry or pre-algebra you know, or and whatever. another thing that in this that I, I really want to emphasize is even women among women who choose homeschooling mm -hmm. a lot of times what we find when we consult with them is the ones who are former teachers struggle the hardest mm -hmm. because they have this preconceived idea of what it's all supposed to look like and they bring it home and and they struggle with but home not working right. like that so because you're not a teacher, mm -hmm. because you are accepting that this is home and we're just going to have to do the best we can, that might be a great strength in the end. Trust me, that could be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you need, you need a teaching degree to do this because you totally do not. And honestly, I don't think anyone's going to expect any of the mothers here to be teaching new things either. We're, we're talking more about review and just keeping yeah. skills up, keeping good habits up, that rhythm that Elizabeth talked to, that's way more important in uh, the discipline and virtue in a child, <laughs> just maintaining that uh, until we're through this uh, special season is far more important than worrying about, well, how am I going to you know, teach math? Or, you know, if you've, if you've gotten your kid through homework after school, you can get your kid through whatever's coming home from the school and you really aren't going to be expected to do a lot of formal teaching past that. So really what's, what's been on my heart and the reason I wanted uh, to collaborate with Elizabeth here is because I feel like with this extra time that you're going to have with your children, this is an opportunity for you to do some learning together as mother and child and also as a family that you would not get to do otherwise. Maybe that's going to be special projects. Maybe that's going to be special games or activities. Maybe that's going to be reading together. But you have this awesome opportunity to connect with your child over fun things. And this can be not miserable. Like it really can be fun really? and a joy. And that's going to look different for every single one of you here. Some of you have science backgrounds and maybe you want to do some fun 
science experiments off the internet I've or watch YouTube lots videos. Lots of women say yeah. that you know they're going to garden like never before. Yes. That, if you love to bake, outside bake with your kids yeah. in the yard. Um, one thing that happened yesterday, my 17-year-old was FaceTiming with my grandchildren, the, the little girls, and, um, and she was in our sewing room going through the fabric stash and promising Easter dresses. And, and at first I was like, what? What? <laughs> what am I going to do that? And then I thought, you know what? We actually do have time to do that and to make it a project. And um, so whatever your passion is, this is, this is it, ladies. You yes. can share that passion mm -hmm. in, in such a big way. But I have heard a lot of people talking about gardening and about cooking. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's gonna bake bread. You know, like all of a mm -hmm. sudden, these things that take time, um, baking bread takes time, mm -hmm. you know, that, that they're gonna do and they can do with their kids. And kids love to bake bread, by the way. Yes. Um, you know, I, my kids really love to cook and they're going to cook with me or they're going to cook for me and, um, and we'll, you know, eat well. So, um, and we'll also talk about stewardship over food a lot more than usual because, you know, we really don't know what's going to be available and it's not going to be a quick run out and get a, a thing anymore. Um, so I think those will be really natural lessons and virtue that'll happen. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I would caution you about as you're, trying to set a rhythm in your life is um, you need to decide what's going to happen with screens. Mm -hmm. And um, I watched on that Thursday. So Wednesday, kind of the world blew up. And on Thursday, as I was super distracted trying to get my act together, I realized that my 11 year old had my, my two youngest don't have phones. Um, they have like old phones that function like iPods. Um, so she'd been FaceTiming with a group of her friends who were all suddenly off school in the middle of the day and like all day they were just following each other around doing whatever I'm like oh my goodness we need a phone roll you know like mm -hmm. this isn't gonna work and um, and I think we all need a phone roll because the thing I was doing on that day <laughs> was falling into this deep hole of holy Wow, what is going on out there? And, mm -hmm. You know, so I think that, that we set an example. We tell, we talk to them about what we're going to do and how those screens are detrimental to what we're going to do. I keep their phones in my room. I told them Friday morning, you know, the default is you may not have your phone. And if you want your phone, you're going to have to ask for your phone. And we're going to talk about what's been done and what hasn't been done and how long you're going to have your phone and what you're going to use your phone for. It's very heavy handed. It's very authoritarian. And I think it's very necessary. And I'm not a super authoritarian parent, but this is, I've seen this get out of control and I see the difference in homeschooling from when we had one computer in the house and it was in, you know, the central room of the house and you had to dial up. Mm -hmm. to, well, actually, when I started in swimming, there wasn't anything. There was no, I don't think, mm -hmm. but, um, but to how hard it is and how, how it squelches curiosity if there's always a screen. And I don't care if it's a phone or a television. I've seen mm -hmm. television be really detrimental. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have those screens tucked away and you have other things out, books, um, art, you know, journals, blank journals are just all kinds of great things. But if you let them get bored and you don't have a screen to satisfy the boredom, they're going to keep thinking, keep learning, and keep those skills up. It will happen. And, um, and I, so, so maybe the takeaway, the one takeaway in establishing a routine and encouraging academics during this and encouraging family togetherness is handle the phone. Just take care of the phone. Um, and honestly, for me, and I, I don't know how everybody else functions, but for me, the less time I spend on my phone, the less anxious I'm going to be. That's true. It's just, it's very I mean, true. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. So, so I'm just going to be honest with you because I'm not in a great place with the television and my children right now. Um, we're just coming out of a hard season since uh, the birth of my little Beckett here. We are not screen free. I, my ideal would be 
screen free during the week. We watch family movie night, you know, maybe Sunday football and that's it. Like that's my ideal. That's just not life right now. And, and we're I don't think screen free, I, especially now. Yeah. I don't think we have. Well, I, I think there's going to, we're going to have a place where we're going to need it. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of the moms here are working moms who are going to be working from home right. and trying to keep the kids busy and trying to get some right. educational stuff. And I think um, something that's helped me is being intentional with what I choose to let them watch. Now my kids right. are all little, so it's probably easier for me in some ways because we have very limited <laughs> number of shows they can <laughs> control. But something that's helped me is just knowing there's a difference between Paw Patrol and Leapfrog. Like right. Paw Patrol, there's nothing that's really helping my child virtuously or educational right. wise or anything with Paw Patrol. Right. And those songs just get in your head and then they're mentally detrimental to the mother and I could right. go on, but leapfrog and they're reading. four year old. I mean, she's putting words together and she's sitting down mm -hmm. and writing on her construction paper, all these letters she's learned because of leapfrog. And that is not my ideal of homeschooling or motherhood or anything, but that's where I'm at that we, we need some leapfrog over here uh, right now. Right. And I think and that's so it. just, instead yeah, of, be intentional right. with, with instead what of it is. screen free. Let's be screen intentional. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, you know, I don't, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to get a list of, um, of screen resources out to you. There are things, you know, you mamas who are all of a sudden home looking at an algebra book and you haven't looked at algebra in 15 years, mm -hmm. I have help for you. You know, there is a screen that is going to show you how the problem gets solved. Mm -hmm. um, there are tools for sure. We love Dreambox yeah. and we love um, Explode the Code and yes. Letter Factory and all those, there are good things on mm -hmm. screens, but do it with intention uh, yeah. for sure, because yeah. that otherwise you've lost. It's just not, they're going to yeah. just dissolve into, into screens. So yeah. also there are some fantastic games or educational type toys that, um, really keep kids occupied a long time. Even kids who aren't little toddlers. I, um, I put together a list of my kids and my kids are 10 and under. Um, but I put, uh, on my blog this weekend, I wrote a list of the 10 toys that are basically they're my babysitters. Like my kids will play for hours and I can actually get something done. I also work from home. So that those are the things that yeah. now when I can't have an actual babysitter come in my house because we're going to be quarantined here. Mm -hmm. Um, those toys really are my workhorses and not all toys are created equally in terms of bringing out creativity in a child, keeping their attention, allowing multiple children to play together and actually get along. So um, I, stephaniewinert.com is my blog. So it's right at the top because I just um, put it out there. But if anybody needs some toys, toys are also a great, really good toys that keep people, kids distracted <laughs> are yeah. a good alternative to screens too. But it takes some... Um, like thought for that, or maybe switching things out to keep um, kids' attention and you know make it feel new. Sure. But that can also be. I mean, we already have uh, some big jigsaw puzzles going. It's ironic. I um, I bought like a set of five or six jigsaw puzzles that I thought I was so clever, and I put them in a box. And I thought, you know, next snow day, I'm pulling these out, and I'm going to be, you know, going to be all ready with a jigsaw puzzle, <laughs> and it never snowed. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, well, I still have jigsaw puzzles. Here they are. Here's your snow day puzzles. Um, and then there are some games that I think are almost addictive for my bigger kids. Yes. You know, where they, what's the name of that game? One Night? Mm -hmm. Is it called One Night? Um, it's like a, a card game, sort of along the lines of Clue, but different. It plays really well. Um, and I swear you can sit a bunch of teenagers in a room and that's the other thing. It expands big. Like you can, you can play it with a pretty big group. You can sit a bunch of teenagers around the table and, and my 11 year old plays it. So it, it spans nicely and they'll, it's addictive. You just keep going and going and going. Another one is Settlers of Catan, oh, um, where you can start that game and, and still be playing it eight weeks from now. So, yeah. um, and, and those are great ways to play together and I mean we come from a very competitive family and I will be the first person to admit that 
particularly with certain personalities here, that game board can get flipped up and everybody walks off in a huff, but that's all part of it too, you know? It's, yeah, yeah. So I hope what we are communicating at least a little bit tonight is that your day does not have to look like a traditional school day at home and that every single aspect of your day anyway can be used as an opportunity to grow in virtue as a family, to educate your child, to help your child develop really wonderful life skills that you want your little one to have anyway, and they might not be getting as much in school. So this is kind of a, just a fun um, kind of extra time, extra season in their life where they can learn some of these skills like baking bread or gardening or putting flower arrangements together or you know, so even cleaning, like teaching a child how to clean properly. So just inviting your children into the rhythm of your day as you already have it and the things that you already have to do is going to fill up a good block of your day anyway if you can in, invite them in work with them have some have some patience right. with them in the kitchen because it's not going to be the same as making bread by yourself or gardening by yourself but if you can engage and it's going to take longer yes and it's not going to be as neat <laughs> yes but you know you can use that time to occupy them, teach them good skills and get done what you already have to do. Now, some of you working moms, you might have activities that you can employ your kids at home to help you. Like maybe you have to do mailings, maybe you have to put stamps on letters, maybe you're gonna teach them how to write a letter, you know, like how to address a letter. I don't know what it's gonna be for you, but each of you have things you, you need to do that you might be able to Invite but let's talk a little into. bit. Uh, I mean, because I, I maybe we'll do a whole thing just with you know on working at home and working moms, which is briefly. You know, I've worked at home part time pretty much my entire motherhood, um, and I know that you do too. And maybe there are a few things we can throw out that are helpful mm -hmm. just to get you rolling. Because I do think mm -hmm. we could talk about that for probably a solid hour. I would really like to do a second Zoom on. Um, working moms coming home and what that's going to look like. Cause that is, that's another layer that's tough and it's going to be sure. tough because there's not a lot of time to prepare. You didn't choose it. It's, it's kind of forced upon you very quickly and yeah. your job is going to expect you to keep rolling with whatever it is that you do, but your children also need you to keep rolling full time with and them this now. And this is extraordinary so. because in a lot of situations, you know, we would be saying, bring in a teenager, you know, whatever. And we, we can't, you know, now it's definitely not as, there aren't as many options right. to help you do this. So, right. um, so maybe we need to do a whole, a yeah. whole hour on that one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's definitely, uh, one thing that helps me is time blocking just real quick. I have to get up before the kids. If I know for sure I'm going to get work done that day. And um, this is, this could work no matter if you're working or not, but I do an enforced quiet time in the afternoon. Yes. I've done this since my kids were babies that from like 1.30 to 3.30, it's quiet time at our house, which means if you're little, you take a nap during that time. And if you're too old for naps, you occupy yourself quietly, whether it's reading a book or listening to a book on Audible, if you can't read yet, uh, drawing, coloring, right. playing a game, but it's not bother mom time. It's um, you know, that's my, that's, that's when I change out the laundry. That's when I check Voxer cause I use Voxer for my work and email. And that's when I, that's when I work basically is before the kids are up and during quiet time. And then once quiet time's over, I have to put my work away. The kids can be loud again. Everybody gets up from naps and that just builds in a rhythm that I know at 1130 in the morning, I can't answer emails for my Right. Process. And I think yeah. that's, that's key. Yes, but I know that at 2.15 in the afternoon, I probably can. And that helps me not feel like I'm failing or that I'm behind or just knowing that right now I'm in kid mode and we're going to bake bread or we're going to do math. And then later this afternoon, I'll have some time. So, And I think, I think the other thing is multitasking is just such a lie. Like, you know, to, to multi, and, and everybody expects that. Like, it's the big right. thing. Women multitask. And you know, you might be able to listen to an audiobook and fold laundry, but you can't listen to a kid and write an email. It, right. it, your brain doesn't work that right. way. And they right. both suffer. Right. That's so true. as much as you can block that time, it works. Now, 
and my kids are old enough so that we can work alongside each other. And very frequently I'll be at the end of the table and I'll have work open and they'll know I'm writing and they're writing too, or they're working on something quietly and that will work. We can make that work. Mm -hmm. That did not work very well when they were little though. Like when they were all little that, that did work. And you know, I've done always done the bulk of my work before they get up in the morning. Um, and I've let them sleep a little later because of that. Another thing is my kids understand what it is to be quiet mm -hmm. all day because my husband, it, it, we have feast or famine around here. He's either traveling or he's working from home. And if he's working from home, he can't get up every time he's going to make a call and say, oh, you guys, I'm getting on a call. You know, like it's just a general expectation that, that we need to be quiet. My children know how to be quiet. And, they, and the, even when they were little, they knew you know, these are inside voices and we need to do it. It's not perfect. It doesn't always happen. Every once in a while, I'll get a text that says, can you get your ratty children to be quiet, please? <laughs> and I mean, it definitely isn't, it still isn't perfect and they're all mm -hmm. old enough, but, mm -hmm. but they do, they do know and they do respect that and they can learn, you know, daddy's on the phone and yeah. we can't be yelling and, yeah. you know, we just have to, to keep it quiet. So yeah, I think that's, that's all. That's all part of it too. Yep. All right, we only have a couple of minutes left because we're gonna wrap it up uh, in under an hour. We do plan to do more of these. I'd like to do one um, on working from home moms. Um, I think Elizabeth, we need to hear from you about teenagers more because that's a big question for a lot of moms. And that's, that's gonna be tough because teens are used to being out of the house even more than the it's, little kids and it's going to be gonna tough be and, and I, when uh, the, yeah. the peer group means so much and all that it's just going to be and i think you know just quickly on the teenage and we can do the teenage topic deeply later but on that teenage and college age topic one of the things my husband and i were talking about tonight after dinner i might cry um Aww. they're so disappointed i mean there are so many things that were you know, when you're in a college environment, you know, you have those four years and this spring mm -hmm. is whatever this spring was to them mm -hmm. to abruptly have that snatched away and then yep. be distanced from their friends. Yep. Um, and I was telling him this afternoon, I don't think I've given enough time to really empathizing with that experience. You know, I mm -hmm. kind of zeroed in on my daughter who, you know, was not going to student teach all of a sudden. Um, but but you know, these, these, when they've had their sports seasons ripped out and, and that they won't get it back. That's not going to happen now. That season mm -hmm. is just gone. Um, mm -hmm. I have a, a sweet girl who keeps texting me prom dresses mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, it's yeah. just, that's, that's not going to happen. Like, yeah. like I, you know, I, the CDC thing came across right before we got online and, and, um, you know, they were doing the math eight weeks is, it's just, it's out. So, um, so I, I think that right now, you know, we'll come back, we'll talk about teens, but right now just be really tender with your teens. Um, and, and I think I haven't been enough. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I was really in major organizational mode the first yep. few days of this and what do we need and, you know, call and get the nebulizer and, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, right. you have to do in your house when you hear right. hunker right. down. And I really did. I shifted to a very executive mindset, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to impact them more than it's going to impact your little ones. Mm -hmm. um, it, and to be separated from their peers is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, to be under roof and kind of under our authority again is really hard mm -hmm. um, because they've had so much independence. Somebody's got to be in charge here, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to be a little bit of a dance for a little while, but, mm -hmm. um, but just be gentle with those teams. Yeah. So let's just chat about where we go from here because I, believe that God gave us this technology for such a time as this so that we can be together as women. There's women on this call. Every single one of you has gifts that the Lord has uniquely given you. Every single one of you has wisdom to share. And I believe that we're called into community to help each other right now. So we will be hopefully offering some more Zoom calls on more specific topics. And also I'd like to do some with open Q&A because 
uh, clearly in the chats, we have so many questions. I'm watching them, I'm writing them down. I will write them down afterwards so that we can try to address the questions that you have. And then a couple other places for resources so that we can help you off of Zoom and through especially this next week as everyone's finding their new normal. Elizabeth on Instagram is at Elizabeth Foss. She has a blog called In the Heart of My Home. Is, did I say that right? In the Heart of My yes, Home? Yes, but it's, it's ElizabethFoss.com. So oh, it is? Oh, sorry. Home. See, I've so, been following you so long yeah. that I, your old blog name, yeah. I know. <laughs> but, um, but the thing with, yeah, and that blog has been, it needs to be dusted off a little bit, but it's there for you. And there's plenty of resources there. We're going to try to clean it up a little bit in the next few days so that it's easier to navigate and you can find some things. But, you know, we're all figuring this out together. Yeah. Nobody yeah. has done this before. No. And we're going we're gonna to help each other. Um, my Instagram is at Stephanie Weinert. And um, in my Instagram profile, I'm starting to collect some blog posts and just do some real quick, simple posts with links to things that help me with little children. That's really all that I can speak to. But um, I put our 10 favorite read aloud books if you want to start making read aloud time part of your day. I highly recommend it if you have little ones and can do that. It has been kind of the anchor of my home life with my children. And it's more, it's more important to me than any subject of school. I would rather skip math and get our read aloud time in because not only is it stretching their imagination, it's, it's bringing us together as a family and we're learning together. And I have seen the most um, transformation each of the lives of my little little ones through just reading aloud together as a family so I put the 10 books that have just like shaped our home I, I in my blog post I said these are my kids friends because <laughs> these books yeah. are so dear to us and have and they're part of your us. conversation yes and, yes yeah. it's just part of life to have these these close friends and these stories so that's there and then I did our 10 um, I did the 10 games that I almost treat like a babysitter. And I know that that might sound strange, but these are the games that my kids will just sit at my feet and play for hours. And, um, they're all creative, um, kind of educational type activities or games. So those are there. And then I'm going to try to do some posts this week about, um, just little homeschooling resources for young kids that like little workbooks and things that my kids love because in the summer, my kids are all running around, but I try to keep a little bit of structure. So I kind of feel like for a lot of us moms, it's going to be kind of like summer school. Yeah. You want to do a little math. You want to do maybe a little handwriting page that's fun and cute. You want to do a little phonics. Um, so I've got some workbooks that my kids love and are just really sweet and all available on Amazon. So you don't have to go anywhere and buy them, but I'll try to put that together this week too. So let's stay in touch. And, and I think um, um, we're going to, we're going to do um, some picture book suggestions. And my, my girl really want to share picture books. Good. So we'll probably be doing that on Instagram. Perfect. Um, so we'll, we'll, I don't know, maybe we'll figure out a way to save it to the blog or something. I, I need to work out the whole technological end of it, but, um, but we'll be back. For sure. Yes, we, will. we absolutely we will. want to, to keep the conversation going and, and, you know, keep hashing it out together. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we can just leave you with, you are not alone. Everyone, everyone feels crazy right now and that's okay. Um, you can do this. God has prepared you before all time for this moment to do this job and we're going to do it. We're going to help each other do it. And, uh, this can be a, just a huge blessing, uh, just to see, the growth that will happen in each of our families through the struggle. It's not going to be easy. Nobody promises it's going to be easy or smooth, but it's going to be good because um, it's Lent after all. And I think we're all going to grow maybe more than we intended when we uh, set our resolutions a couple weeks ago for what we were going to hope to accomplish in Lent. So it's going to be good. And we will um, hopefully come together in community and bring more uh, women with us. I think that's right. uh, something we can do too is, Next time we get together on Zoom, bring a couple girlfriends with you because your girlfriends need help too. And hopefully we can just uh, have the sisterhood grow and really help each other. The other thing I think just to take away is, you know, this is, this is for a season and every season of motherhood looks different. This one looks different than anything we could have anticipated. But at the heart of this is still um, making a home, nurturing a family, 
um, nurturing and marriage, all those things together, you know, strongly undergirded by faith, that's not going to, that's, that's enduring. Right. And the skills that we learn and the lessons that we learn and the ways that we strengthen relationships right now, those are going to go well beyond this eight week period. You know, we're, we're doing things now that, that are, are forging bonds for forever. Mm -hmm. um, and our kids are going to go back and they're going to remember this and they're not going to remember, you know, how many math pages they did, but right. they're going to remember the atmosphere of your home mm -hmm. and the demeanor mm -hmm. and the way that, that you conveyed your faith, mm -hmm. because this is, this is a period that's calling for faith for sure. And it, it's, I'm not even talking about, you know, directly speaking about it, but if you can convey a sense of peace right. amidst the crazy, then they're going to remember that they're going to remember that you baked brownies at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. <laughs> um, and, and so I think that those things that just remember, we need to remember that, that that atmosphere is, is critical to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I encourage you to Look, look at now, but also look at beyond now and see how this is going to really um, help you grow in your role. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, ladies. Elizabeth, thank you so much for doing with yes. this with me. So this was such an experiment and I think yeah. it worked well. I hope that this blessed all of you to be here. This certainly blessed me to see other women. I have already been home for like four days now. So like, it's really nice to see other adult females. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Every night. I think I need this. I know. I was just oh. thinking, so how soon can I do this again? Um, <laughs> we'll figure it out and we'll let you know really soon, you know, yeah. what kind of a schedule we can do. But we, we understand that another one soon would be a really good idea. Yep. So, yep. And then we can delve into more specific questions and more specific age groups and situations and stuff. So, all right, ladies, well, God bless you. I hope that you all have a wonderful night. Thank you again, Elizabeth. And okay. we will see you soon. Oh, one last thing. I recorded this. So if I can figure out how to upload the link on Instagram and all that, I will. And then you can share it with your friends or your sister-in-laws or whoever sure. needs to hear it. Yeah. So we will have that available to you really soon too. Hey. All right. Good night, Good everyone. Night. We'll be God back bless. Soon. Bye. Bye.